Hi, everyone. Welcome to Executive Table Talk. My name is Carla Biazzi. I'm a personal stylist, and I will be your co-host for today's session. Our topic today is mastering your interview attire, crafting the ideal professional wardrobe. So now I would like to introduce my co-host, Sharon Grace. Sharon is an executive recruiter at the Duffy Group. So hello, Sharon. Welcome. Hi, Hi. thank you so much. I'm so glad that we could take this time today, Sharon, to talk about this because mm -hmm. I think it's very timely. You know, with what we see, like people coming back into the workforce that stepped out because of COVID, we see people changing jobs, you know, a lot of it based on work from home or hybrid or in the office. So for, you know, I feel like there's so much going on right now in the workforce that this was really a very relevant subject. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yep. And okay, well, let's get September. Okay. It's September. It's fall and cooler temps starting. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Some more so than others, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I do think that, you know, also kind of changes our mood a little, right? As we're getting out of excessive, oppressive heat, mm -hmm. and now we're getting into fall. Mm -hmm. So, Sharon, my first question for you is, what is your process when you are preparing a client for what they need to wear to an interview? Can you talk about that, what your process is? Mm -hmm. Yes, great. Thanks, Carla. Um, so first I'll, I'll add with a Duffy Group, um, we are hired by the client. So we, we represent the client. We work with lots of, of candidates, of course. Um, we're prepping. Uh, and, and staying engaged with them throughout because uh, the goal here is that as we're playing matchmakers to find that special, that right fit that they've been looking for and what the candidate's been looking for. So in preparation for an interview, and we cover that in detail. In fact, um, my peers and I just did a, a session on that topic last week on Thursday. Well, part of the preparation for the interview process should be what are you going to wear? And what do you know about the culture? Because it may vary. It may vary based on where you live, the time of year, the industry, and what the position is. But at the end of the day, it, it's an interview and you want to put your best foot forward. Feel confident, looking and feeling good, uh, it comes through. And that just add that to your plan of, of what should I be wearing? What fits this culture? What fits me? What do I feel good in? And what's a good color? And this includes if it starts in the interview process these days, still start out on a uh, virtual interview. And that's a great opportunity to practice on your own and try different outfits, um, make sure the lighting is good, see how you feel in that outfit. Does that help? Yes, us absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea, Sharon, that you're talking about practice. And all you have to do is get your phone, turn it on the camera and sit in front of it and see what you look like. Um, yeah, that's great. I love that. So now let me ask you this. So how has the pandemic and kind of this work from home movement changed the way candidates dress for interviews or has it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a big one. Um, it's been quite different in the past few years. We all know the story in, in 2020, we were all working from home. Um, some were already working from home as myself. Um, and then it's just, it's so easy to get into a more of a relaxed, comfortable <laughs> feeling. Um, you know, need to go into meetings and see people. And we've all worked so hard with trying to keep that cohesiveness together um, and the team environment. So we're not at home alone, that you are included. And again, it's 
even if you're on a, a video call like what we're doing, you're meeting other people and you're still putting and giving out your impression of yourself and how you may feel on the inside shows on the outside and um, vice versa. I, I just think a rule of thumb, just lead with uh, feeling good, which will show on the outside. Absolutely. And I'll even add on to that saying, you know, you're talking about really preparing for that interview. If you've got some, you know, jackets, blazers, I'm going to say a more professional mm -hmm. thing, go ahead and wear them out. You know, relaxed suiting is such a huge trend right now where people are putting, you know, jackets and jeans and, you know, maybe a dressier pant and a tee and a jean jacket. And it really goes back to what you're saying. We just don't want you to be uncomfortable sitting in front of that interviewer, right? So practice and prepare. I love that. I think that's so smart. Okay, so Sharon, for people that are on a tight budget, so maybe it's somebody that's been out of the workforce, is ready to get back in. For those folks with a small budget, what do you suggest as far as putting together this interview wardrobe? Mm -hmm. Yes, a good point, Carla, because we both have an interest in, in fashion, and that's a pretty broad uh, term. There's all varying levels of that. I think um, of knowing, it starts with ourselves, of knowing you know, liking ourselves, knowing who we are and dressing for who we are today. Not who we were, if weight is an issue, whether it's too much or too little, um, let's not focus on that. And don't think about the areas that you're not happy with because only you know. And too often, and again, back to the being uh, at home and the working from home, is that we just got so comfortable and loose fit clothes um, just made us feel good. Well, I believe you can feel good dressing up and dressing appropriate for your audience and dressing with intention. So once you know um, and, and accepting of who you are today, you may have things in your closet that do reflect that or a piece or two. And it's really just about taking, and you can speak more of this too, I'd imagine, of, of that inventory if you want to start there with your, with your wardrobe of what you already have. And maybe it's just a piece that you want to bring in. And maybe it's a new jacket that can be worn. You can dress it up. You can dress it down. The right color, not to be afraid of color as well. And the shirt, the blouse underneath, maybe explore with, with some color. Um, there's some even nice prints. I would probably for interviewing, maybe not recommend anything too bold, um, but something along those lines to keep into consideration. And sometimes too, if just, if you are working from home or that first interview, um, boy, I've even had in the past, um, before this virtual world uh, happened, um, I remember I've had candidates in the past that um, didn't feel comfortable dressing up the day of an interview because they were in a casual environment. And in some ways that still holds true today. So I would recommend back then of just having an extra, you know, have your jacket, keep it in the car, have something that you can easily change into. Um, putting on a dress is a very easy fix. Um, switching out your shoes, um, the jewelry, and so forth. Not to overdo on the jewelry, though. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'll say this as well. It's, it's so different in different industries, right? So I'm in the fashion industry. So really what I have on today, I consider really a little toned down, you know, pink, blouse, paint jacket. I've got some big gold jewelry. 
And you had actually, Sharon, touched on this in the beginning about industry and why that's important. So for me, if I were interviewing for a position, I would look very different than somebody, say, in the engineering field. So keep that in mind because some people are really making big pivots, right, in their career. So especially if you're going into something much more conservative than where you were or the opposite, keep that in mind. And I want to share this too, because Sharon and I actually had an off side conversation. So of course, we want you to be comfortable in an interview. You have to, you know, we don't want you to feel um, not yourself in your clothes, right? So there needs to be that level of comfort. But, and Sharon, I'm going to let you speak to this. Sometimes that word comfortable can be almost detrimental. We want to be very, very comfortable. So I would almost exchange the word comfort for happy. We want you to be happy with what you're wearing. And when you're happy, that will exude from you and people can tell. So wear things that make you happy. If you have that favorite dress and it's got a little floral print, but you love it and you think it would be appropriate, maybe with a jacket over it, that's okay. Mm -hmm. We want you to love what you're wearing so that you can do nothing but go into that interview and talk about your experience, your qualifications, your skills, your talent. The last thing we want you to be worried about is, gosh, I hope I look okay. I hope I'm not underdressed. Mm -hmm. I hope what I have on isn't too dramatic. So those are the things that when we're talking about being comfortable, we're really not talking about you wearing sweatpants and a sweatshirt, even though it is very comfortable. Right. <laughs> we want you to feel comfortable in that outfit so that you feel confident because that's what needs to come through. Exactly. Exactly right. Yeah. And and I'll also add this too. I don't want to forget about the hiring leaders uh, because both of you, the candidate, the hiring leader, this is that opportunity for that first impression. So if you are just entering or planning to enter the job market, this is an opportunity to look at your wardrobe and plan ahead, just as you are with updating your resume. And here's maybe there's a little bit of a time investment, sure, maybe more some for some than others on doing that um, wardrobe inventory, trying on things. As I mentioned, dressing for who you are today. If you have suits and there are people that are coming back into the job market that have been out of it and maybe it could be about 10 years for whatever the reason is and that was maybe a different industry they were working in. That was a different time. Staying somewhat, you know, current too with the styles, um, but fit. Uh, you're not the same. We're continuing to grow. We're not the same that we were 10 years ago. Um, so double check with that and be current and be relevant with that. I like to also say, as you're preparing for those behavioral situational type questions and what your answers will be, to feel confident with answering questions like that, you want to feel good with what you're wearing. So try on a couple of different outfits. Have your plan A, plan B, and do that if you could a week before. Um, know which ones because the more time you have, then if there's something that you need to um, add on, uh, switch out, this is the opportune time to do that. Have a plan A, a plan B, weather may change. You may the day before think this is the outfit and then you wake up and you're not feeling it. Um, and then you have that opportunity to switch. Um, also for, for, you know, speaking of myself, you know, for women, if you know that you're, we're sitting, we're going to be sitting a lot. And I used to love my go-to dress was a sheath style dress. Um, but now I may not find that as comfortable sitting all day and check the length. So practice sitting down, getting up. Uh, maybe that is another, you know, fit, you know, a transition into that as well, but 
do you know a dress that has maybe a little bit more of a flare? Check on the length and make sure that that's appropriate as well. Um, a jacket. So if it is a sleeveless dress, jacket is always a great alternative to add to that as well. Plan for second, third, maybe fourth interviews. And the first one meeting, you know, would be on a virtual um, that gets included as well. So plan for that. And thinking also of the shoe, the heels that we're wearing, if let's say the second or third interview may include a tour, just know that you're going to be walking or, and thinking back in my big city days of, um, you know, taking the train in and then walking for a distance, or even if you're parking in the parking lot and you've got a long walk, think ahead about that too. If you need to switch your shoes, wear something comfortable, and then when you get in the building, nothing worse than being worn out, your feet are sore by the time that you get to the interview, and then you're sitting down and you're like so thinking about your feet and how you wish you could take your shoes off. And then only to know that the interview is going well and they want you to meet other people, which is a great sign, of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> And a couple other tips that I'll throw in, if it is inclement weather and, you know, you do have to wear a nicer shoe, don't hesitate to put on a tennis shoe or a small galosh, something like that. Wear it in. Once you get to the building, you can take it off, switch into your other shoes, and you can bring a tote and stick those other shoes in there. Um, another thing, and this actually happened to somebody I know, be careful with virtual interviews. A lot of people have a tendency, and I'm sure you hear this, Sharon, to dress from the waist up. All right. And then on the bottom, they have on sweatpants or something really casual. But I know a candidate who was actually on a virtual interview and had that situation and had to get up and wasn't even thinking about it. Had to get up and go to get something. And of course, the interviewer saw that they had sweatpants on on the bottom. So I'm going to recommend please get dressed head to toe. I am actually dressed head to toe right now in professional wear because it also changes your mind set. Right. Then you start thinking more professional, not like, man, as soon as this is over, <laughs> I'm taking this jacket off and putting my t shirt back on. We really want you to be in that professional mode um, internally and externally. Right, right. Yep. Great tip. Great reminder <laughs> about that. Yes. Um, and then Sharon, talk for a minute about the difference between an interview wardrobe and just having a couple of outfits picked out for an interview. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that first interview is your first impression. And Yes, that first, uh, the virtual, you know, counts, but it even more so when you're meeting in person because you've got the handshake and now you're seeing. And if anything, you have a little bit more of that rapport that's been built on uh, virtual and you should be excited to now see each other in person. So follow up with that. So what they saw on video now, they're expecting to see in person and that's why I say have a few outfits planned, planned in advance. And it could be as soon as that next day or two. So yeah, it, I guess, right. It's never too early to think about that. Um, and so, especially this is a great time. I can't emphasize if you're planning on being in the job market. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And That's for awesome. those of you on a budget, you can always put together what we call a capsule wardrobe, meaning you have several pieces, but they all go together. So if you are on a limited budget and, you know, ladies, it's a skirt, it's a button up shirt, it's a jacket, a pair of pants, they can all be intermixed and men, the same thing. If you get a nice pant, 
a nice button up shirt, a sports coat, add a couple of pieces. Maybe you just change out the shirts and it gives it a different look. But keep that in mind that you really need an interview wardrobe. And I think, you know, Sharon, you can really speak to this, but don't, mm -hmm. isn't it very typical nowadays to have multiple interviews during mm -hmm. that process? Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Yeah. And an, another, you know, thing to add to that too is the market is, is um, I'll use the term going through a rebalance. It was very fast and busy in the past few years. And now um, we may, the candidates may feel that they have to put more work in on this. And I'll say the same for the interviewer as well, for the hiring leader um, as well. So there is more competition uh, depending on the field of the profession that you're in. So be prepared for that. So this is an opportune time um, to set yourself apart. And when, you, when you're dressing the right fit and style for you, you're going to feel good and that confidence. Um, so this is, this is the main um, area of what Carl and I want to really express uh, is that. And have these outfits, something we also chatted about too, Carla, um, be your own, not borrowing um, from a friend, um, or do I say mom or dad right? or sister? Um, this is, we all have our individual styles and that shows if you're not who you are, um, it's, it is an obvious thing. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it can. It is. Yeah. And it just goes back, Sharon, to what you were saying in the very beginning that you have to be comfortable and confident. So if you're, you know, wearing someone else's clothes, are you really going to feel that comfortable and confident in that interview? Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah, it's an investment. It absolutely is. So it looks like we have a question, Sharon, from our audience. Are there any interview fashion faux pas that job seekers should avoid at all costs? Would you like to take that one? Well, I know one um, situation that happened to me, this was in an up and coming, you know, person, but it was a video call, but it was in a professional um, um, profession somewhere that the candidate should have known uh, to have interviewing and uh, stayed in, in a t-shirt, you know, was in that work from home and thought, well, I work from home. This is going to be remote as well, that that's okay. And it's not, it's not. Um, if you're not working for, so for a candidate, if you're not working with a recruiter and I hope that you are and that you find someone because you'll be able to get these other tips, um, that person, you may not know uh, that that may be the reason why you're not moving forward. And the hiring leaders do take note of that. So I received the feedback and I passed that on to the candidate. And that was helpful information for that person to move forward in their interviewing journey. Yes, um, I can absolutely see that <laughs> being much too, too comfortable in, in that interview. And I'll add a couple of other things. Don't do anything too dramatic whether it's color, whether it's a style, don't do drama. Don't wear things that make you unhappy. If you are wearing a suit, maybe it's a little too tight, it's a little uncomfortable, maybe you've pulled out a color you don't particularly care for. This is about making you feel confident. So even though it may not be a fashion faux pas, it's something that you need to be concerned with in your own fashion. And I'll say this too, if you have gotten out of the job market and now you are interviewing for a position that is requiring you to have clothing that is different than what you own, like Sharon said earlier, go back through your closet, do an inventory. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to buy something new. If you have 
a two-piece suit and maybe the pant or skirt is a little outdated, look at the jacket. The jacket might be very classic and be completely fine with something else. So think about how definitely your suit as separates. I would say that. Mm -hmm. And keep your fashion modern and relevant. If you're not sure, and, and Sharon, we've talked about this because mm -hmm. we, we do enjoy fashion, but there are people out there that don't follow it as much. And so when they hear us saying, be modern and relevant, they say, like Carla, Sharon, I don't understand what you mean by that. If you don't know, get help. This is what we do. So if you are in a store, let a sales associate help you. This is what they are trained for. They're very good at it. They want to make you look good. You can enlist the help of a personal stylist. If you're working with a recruiter, these are people that can help you pick the right items that are appropriate for the energy interview, but make you feel good. Okay, we have another question. Sharon, do you recommend to attend overdressed? Oh, is it better to be overdressed or underdressed? Yes, I know. Good question, Ernesto. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, here's a here's an example. This is a recent um, one here with a, a client that I'm working with. It's a hundred million dollar company, and I'm meeting with the CEO recently, and we're planning, you know, for the interview process. And uh, the point that he brought up was, you know, we're a casual, laid back um, culture here. So if someone is used to wearing suits every day. Um, they may not be comfortable here, you know, so we just never know. And I thought that was such a great tip. However, it is the interview. So now when I get to the interview stage and I'm um, prepping the candidate, I will be discussing what the culture is like there. Now, the CEO may not be in a suit, but that does not mean that the candidate should not be in their suit because this is the interview. And I specifically discussed this with the CEO. We're all on the same page. They may not be in their business suits during the interview, but the candidate should be as well. And now they know what that culture is like. And then on the flip side, I have another client that's a small uh, organization. And um, a past uh, employee um, from uh, several years ago or so did very well in the interview process and looked great. Uh, but then on a day-to-day, -day, um, did not put an interest in their attire and uh, in a leadership role where you're, you know, the forward, outward facing, you know, person of the organization and meeting with people, um, that's a first impression that you're giving. And it was not a very positive one. So it continues on um, past that. So if you're just putting something on to get through the interview process, you know, and they liked you during that, just understand and really take a check with yourself. You may have really enjoyed <laughs> dressing up and it's not really a bad thing. Just what's probably not, what you're not feeling is that you're not in the right outfit that fits well or right. the, the fabric, the material may not be good. Okay, Sharon, another question. If I know I don't have good fashion sense, how can I find someone to help me put together an appropriate interview attire? Oh, wow. Well, Carla, <laughs> I can certainly handle this one. <laughs> so like I said, you can always go into stores and ask sales associates. They're very happy to help you. You can enlist a personal stylist such as myself. This is what I do. You can work with a recruiter and they will help you. Now, I will say this. If you are on somewhat of a budget and feel as though, you know, enlisting help, paying someone may not be an option, you can always 
look online. Now, here's where I want to be very careful when I say this. If you are interviewing for a job in the financial industry, and maybe it's mid-management, that is the exact kind of thing that you want to Google. Mid-management, financial, financial industry interview. Look at pictures. See what people are wearing. And not only what they're wearing, look at the style. Look at the color. Look at the level of professionalism that they are displaying. It's very, very important. And I would say this, most everybody I know tells me, I know so-and-so, whether it's a relative or a friend, she always looks great. He always looks so put together. Find that friend. And believe me, most people are going to be very, very, very happy to help you with something like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Sharon, let me ask you this. So what would you say is really the biggest challenge when you're working with a client tr and trying to get that right wardrobe? Mm -hmm. Of the, well, I think, you know, for, for me and where it would fit in is, is the type of uh, culture, you know, an environment that they're accustomed to. And sometimes a candidate may not be comfortable in a, in a dressy, you know, attire, uh, however, it's that, you know, the delineation of, um, you know, more, I know we're using the word comfort, casual comfort, <laughs> um, but professional, you know, there, there is a real thing about that. And, um, you know, and, and just emphasizing, you know, dressing for who you are today and knowing what feels good and what fits uh, you properly. And sometimes people tend to worry too much about trying to cover up and then they feel that they need to wear something bigger and that only actually adds to that. And the same for someone um, that is wear that's thinner, that feels it can wear tighter fitting and, and that just doesn't work as well. So it's really finding that right fit and you know, and sometimes in the department stores, usually like the big ones, they'll have personal stylists there. So just to at least um, point you in the right direction to get that foundation of what fits you. And once you start trying on different clothes and understanding fit, different brands are cut differently. And mm -hmm. um, different silhouettes, um, you know, complement a certain body type, you know, over others. We all have our pluses and minuses mm -hmm. that we want to accentuate and, you know, not emphasize at the same time, too. And it can be done. Absolutely. Well, Sharon, I can't believe it. It's been 30 minutes. I knew this conversation would I go know. quick. And certainly we could definitely do another 30. But yeah. let me just thank you so, so much for joining me today on this important topic. I appreciate everything that you offered. It was great conversation. I want to thank everybody in our audience today who is tuning in with us. And for those of you that watch this later on a recording, and thank you to our producers who made this happen. So until next time, Carla Piazzi, personal stylist, and I wish you well and stay stylish. Okay. Thanks, Carla. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.